<laughs> I don't know why. This is sexual energy being tapped in the right places. You see, sex being that our chakra system is a, is a deep thing. You see, our chakra system, or the endocrine system, let's speak English, the chakra is for therapy. But endocrine system has the pineal gland, okay? Has the thyroid gland, has the adrenal gland, and the prostate gland, all in line. But the power comes from up down here to the foot to the base. So when your base is weakened, or, or when this is be- beaten up, you're all told, ah, one round and you're done. You call yourself a, you call yourself a man. I will not go past that. But men sexually, we get our energy and strength from a place of feeling I am the guy. I am lifted. I have told you that there are places I've done crazy sex where because a woman knows that I am going to make her crazy. Not because of what I have. I know men who have way bigger stuff who can even go two hours more than I do. But by reason that this woman accords a certain respect for me in that department, she knows I'm going to do it. So, women, do one job for you. The moment you still see your husband as a, as a boy, the moment you can still speak openly about him and tell you, you know what, you're not even a man, which kind of dick is that? That means you have bashed him. Come to a place of understanding. Let's learn each other. Because sex to women is not, you see, the vagina itself is not as deep as sensitivity. The sensitivity and craziness of the vagina is two inches in. Every man at least has two inches. Meaning, it's not how heavy, and old a man is. How, 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 how crazy I am that's going to be. In other words, I have women who come to me and say, but my husband is a thing. But me, I have never come. Huge thing, but I have never come. Meaning, the, the physical thing has no place in it. So, women must understand that how you accord respect to your husband elevates his worth. So, before you even come sexual, the embra- uh, you embrace it matters a lot more. So, let's come to the basic of understanding that you, whatever you do to your woman, has lesser impact to how you make her feel. Whatever I make her feel, everything I'll do will start functioning. If I make her feel special, whatever I do will be functioning. So, we go back to the drawing board and say, do you know your woman? Do you know each other? Before you call me uh, incapacitated in sex, do you know someone else thinks I am their star? Before you call me small big, do you know another person just adores me and knows I can do what I'm doing? So that's where we find a woman at home bashing their husband and they're fighting. A bitch out there is enjoying him much more. And they're happy to get crowning him as king. Crowning him as king. This this makes me think about the question, the thing that we were talking about earlier. What makes a man go and sleep with his mate? What makes him? You see, it's simple. Men by nature want respect, and men are, men men have have the respect for this innocence. This is what one. I have a, a, a crib of guys called the Bachelor's Crib. Okay, they are married, but we just meet and talk about crazy things. One of the guys said, having sex with my wife... How do you get into that circle? <laughs> I'll let you know. Yeah. <laughs> having, having sex with my wife became a job. How? This woman is like a CEO or a businessman. She goes, shower, sits somewhere and say, have you showered? She starts sniffing me. Did you shower? So by the time I enter bed, I feel like I am a primary section. I feel like I am a child. <laughs> so this man believes that I cannot have sex with such woman because she has been vetting me before I enter bed. Did you shower? Did you brush? Audited. D- I mean, auditing. So, <laughs> so one time I say, you know what, guys? So but you know, you gotta shower, you gotta brush. Exactly. But how you do it? You see, this is wisdom. How you do it? Yeah. Instead of asking you, did you shower? Don't shower before you shower. So shower together. It's romantic. Before you ask him if you brush, don't brush before you shower. Just put paste on both of them. Ah, there we go. We, we go. And start together. That's a way to induce him into thing, doing what So the wisdom doing. there is on how the woman approaches the sensitive things. See, so for example, the man's teeth are smelling. Uh-huh. Right? There is a way you can tell a man and it puts him off. Exactly. But then there is a wiser way uh, where you can do what uh, Tony Robbins calls a nested command. Okay? You can ask something like... Um, did you see the way the toothpaste is uh, just about to get finished? So that nested command 
makes the man to go to the bath. To, I mean, makes him to understand that hey, we're talking about brushing teeth here. Instead okay. of saying your teeth are smelling. I say that's a funny joke. It's something I saw uh, someone shared recently. So they're they're in bed, and the woman says, um, "By the way, I I don't have a panty now." And the man is looking at him, looking on the other side. Said, "Okay." Shall buy tomorrow, <laughs> <laughs> and he has no idea the girl is making that pass. Or maybe he does, but he's like, no. so. So this is this this is this is line. I, I'll tell you, the, the, you see, the Bible says that a foolish woman breaks her house with her own hands. That's Proverbs. Yes, and a wise woman. Yeah. Huh? The wise woman builds a house, but a foolish woman breaks it down with her own hands. And I want to hear what you have to say about this, because this is a, something I have a revelation about. So, so you see, in most marriages and relationships do not break because of what happened. It breaks because of what, how it was handled. Okay. You see, I deal with issues every day, and yeah. this woman says, there is one who saw a text message. Mm. an erroneous text message or a flatting text message mm. and they fought and they separated mm. another person caught their wife red-handed in bed with another guy and they never separated another man caught just discovered two kids that he thought were his they're not his amongst those which is worse which is a worse evil I don't know man I don't know it's all equal <laughs> it sounds equal but guess what the other person saw a text message they fought because of a text message a flatting text message this person found a girl in bed with another man. Red-handed. Red-handed. And guess what? They never separated. Yeah. Life moved on. So that means that there's a degree of certainty in between how these things was handled. So before you even break marriage or relationship, sometimes wisdom is called to level. Men or boys fight women. Men, essential women, weigh them. And about lead. Weigh them and lead them. And the Bible says they're weaker vessels. So if we know they're weaker vessels, it means 70 or 90% of your standing relationship is dependent on your ability as a man to lead. to lead. So we go back to the drawing board. This guy sleeps with the housemaid for the first time. This is what she said. This is what the guy said. My girl's thing was so natural and they felt, oh, you see that little smell of a man? It's like an aphrodisiac. This woman is perfumed everywhere in the bed is perfumed. But sometimes this natural scent of that pumpkin brings the beauty and the glory of because sex. Mm. So, he sleeps with a maid because it, it is simple and easy to sleep with a maid. The wife, on the other hand, is vetting him, auditing, like as if appraisal of sorts. So he's like, man, this is not what I want. Yeah. This is where we come to bless it. Well, the reason why God speaks to you to respect your husband as a woman. Listen carefully. It is very hard to respect somebody who you know their fault. Whoa. Whoa. That's deep. Very difficult. And, and in, in marriage, huh? that's how. That's the only place where it's very easy to see people's faults. Perfect. Up close. And I will tell you something. The reason why God tells you that love your wife is simple. You see a wife and go to her to tell her I love you. Uh, well, when the Bible says in Romans 8, uh, around 35, that nothing, no amount of evil we can never do separate us from the love of Christ. Yeah. Marriage to God is like Christ and the church. Mm. So you as a man, it's in your capacity to walk to a woman and say, I love you. Mm. When did you start unloving her? That means there's no amount, amount of hate or done, whatever she can do, you to stop loving her. Meanwhile, for her, since you're the one who looked out for her, mm. she has a chance to run out because it's you who looks out for her. Mm. So this is where I'm coming to. As we go into this depth of understanding women and men yeah. and how they view sex, when I come to women and tell her I love her, that means she's going to start processing it. Women respond to love the same way they must respond to sex in it. Because they are responding, that means they must be responding to something of higher quality or via value. If they are supposed to be responding to something below their belt, that means they're going to stretch further and struggle. This is where we come to a place of understanding that a woman who is sexually satisfied will do everything there is that is going to flow their marriage. But a woman who is sexually deprived will be a dangerous woman. 
That's why the Bible says in something Psalm, Psalm Solomon, let a breast be enough for you. Meaning, everything around her, if you say you love her, must be enough. Yeah. We got to the place it's where most men run for physicality. Oh, she has a bigger booty. That's nice. That is sexy. She has a thick body. That is sexy. You see, water. There's this water myth that men keep on coming. Let's talk about water. Mm. They look at a girl who's thick, fat, hips, and they say that is water. And then they look at the skinny girl like that's not water. What has your experience told you? Experience has told me that sex is more of what you do to yourself. I've had very tiny girls squatting like crazy and very thick, beautiful western girls come to me by and I'm too dry that I have to put. Why, why is it for me to have sex? Why, why, is, why is that important to men? You see, why does it seem to be important to men? No, it's not about important. It's about how it should be. It's not importance, but... Is it about intrigue, adventure, and... Uh, is it because I know a man who... who Began cheating on his wife because he was looking for what is. What is? Yeah, this is what you need to understand. That this, the, the myth of what I teach women are the squad. The, like, ironically, I do. But this is what you need to understand as a man. Your, your skill has a part in it. But the information your wife has about it also gives a bigger part. Now, there are so many men out there who have a beauty fantasy in the world that every girl must squat for them. Which means that you cannot tell me you have, sorry, a nose and you can't breathe. Meaning everybody who carries a nose by reason or by nature must breathe. So the other thing of squatting is a nature. Somebody just does not know how to do it. So let's get back to the basics. That it's not that important but that's how fantasies are. What you prefer sexually is not what I prefer. Better still, the things that I've experienced in sex, Brian, my friend. Oh, <laughs> it is it, it's crazy that if I start detailing what I've experienced in sex, then I will tell you, don't look at the casing. Get inside and figure out. Mm. Don't look at the casing. You'll be surprised. It has got to be contextual, as in you, you can't copy and paste experience. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah. so I have women who look juicy. Look juicy. Come Brian, I'm too dry. Not even going. I mean, someone sometimes have to put that saliva there for, for him to get away. Brian, help me. So this is where we go to. The sexiness of a small girl can actually end a marriage to a very curvy, a very curvy, curvy booty soft woman. So the simple things of, of semantics of this is your body's response. That's why I tell women, if you are in a marriage, there's nothing natural about sex. The same thing as men. Sex, I think I'll say there's nothing obvious. Nothing, okay, let's, okay, let's, okay, obvious, obvious sometimes can be, but there's nothing natural. What I mean here is, don't just be there sleeping, doing nothing about your sexuality and think it's going to be on top. you got to be intentional you, about it. Exactly, sex is intentional. So, one thing I tell most married people, or people who are intending to get married, the day your sex life breaks, that's the day your marriage starts to shake. Because the Bible says that the two became one after they have sex. So if your oneness has dented, divergent, you start being divergent. Mm. So pay attention to your sex life with your partner. Because to women, sex is not the quality, the quantity is the quality. You will spend with her three hours of pain and I'll come with beautiful ten minutes of pleasure. Like, ooh. Women say, I'd rather have better foreplay than funny sex. We're going to come back after break and then we're just going to pick up from that particular point. Our goal is to be a resource point of growth and safe space where men who are struggling can find a hug. Man can talk to man and become as iron sharpens iron, changing the countenance of his friend. And we want men to be there for each other in this treacherous journey that is a man's life. No man should struggle in the dark alone and we intend to work with men who we view as wounded warriors to get back to their identity, to discover their innate potential as men, as husbands, as fathers, as leaders, because we believe that if the manhood challenge is solved in our generation, half the world's problems will also be solved. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this uh, episode. We are discussing serious stuff here, and I hope uh, you've been tuned in all along. 
Ben, you were sharing about the women in the past six.